Hi, this is Scott Wilkinson, host of Home Theater Geeks. In episode 117, I chat with Jeff Tully about THX Media Director. So stay tuned. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Home Theater Geeks is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E. F-L-Y dot com. This is Home Theater Geeks with Scott Wilkinson, recorded June 25th, 2012. Episode 117, THX Media Director. This episode of Home Theater Geeks is brought to you by Netflix. Watch thousands of TV episodes and movies on your PC, Mac, iPad, iPhone, or TV instantly. All stream directly to you, saving you time, money, and hassle. For your free 30-day trial, go to netflix.com slash twit. Hey there, Scott Wilkinson here, online editor of hometheater.com. This week's guest geek is Jeff Tully, the uh, technology development director at THX, who works on a new project there. Well, not so new, actually. It's been going on for a little while, called Media Director. But we're about to see the fruits of his labor. Hey, Jeff, welcome to the show. Good afternoon, Scott. It's good to, always good to talk to you, of course. Glad to be here. Yes, and you as well. Uh, we've Jeff and I have known each other for a number of years and met up at trade shows and so on and had always had very interesting conversations. So I thought, what better way to do another conversation with you than uh, here on Home Theater Geeks? So, uh, yes. Nope, glad to do it. <laughs> Great. Fantastic. Those who are tuned into the live video stream at live.twit.tv or logged into the chat room at irc.twit.tv can post questions for Jeff, and I'll pass along as many as I can as we go along. So, Jeff, why don't you tell us, uh, give us an overview. What is THX Media Director? Okay. This is a, uh, a technology that THX has been in development, uh, as you pointed out, uh, for, for a few years now. Um, moving a, a bit away from what I think most of this audience would be accustomed to in THX's uh, business of our uh, certified high-end home, uh, home theater equipment, um, we are, have been looking for a way to make the consumer experience with uh, selecting uh, all of the various playback settings on devices um, a little bit more straightforward, a little bit easier, and uh, came up with a, the idea that if we could get information about content uh, to the devices that would tell them what type of content is playing, the devices then would have the ability to uh, determine what the correct playback settings for that particular piece of content would be. And uh, in a nutshell, that's what Media Director is about. It's about connecting the, uh, the characteristics of content to the devices that are playing it back and allow an automatic uh, transition from one, one playback setting to another. Well, this certainly is a big problem with consumers. That is, uh, AV receivers and TVs uh, have gotten so complicated with so many settings. And that's certainly the bulk of, uh, of the questions I get is, how do I set up for this or that or one thing or another? And you have to dig down through layers and layers of menus. And uh, it's really kind of a pain in the, knee, in the you know what. So... Um, I, if I'm not mistaken, that's exactly what Media Director is trying to automate so that consumers don't really have to do that drill down, right? That, that's exactly right, Scott. And I think one thing to, for both of us to recognize, too, is that the reason these devices uh, in the living room have gotten so complex is, is not because the manufacturers are, are out to uh, bedevil our lives. Uh, in fact, what they've been <laughs> doing is adding features and functions uh, – on one end, to allow the home theater to play back all of the different kinds of content uh, that's being uh, delivered to the homes these days. I mean, we at one point have uh, broadcast television, and that was kind of it. Uh, we added uh, videotapes, and that was sort of well switched between one and the other with DVD, cloud service cable, satellite, um, increasing number of, of forms and formats of delivering content to the living room. Um, the, the devices actually have been keeping up. They've been adding buttons to the remotes, as you say, adding levels to the menus. And 
and I think most certainly any high end home system, but even many of the the uh, lower cost ones today can find a playback setting that's right for uh, all of these varied types of content. But all of these types of content aren't the same. You know, the premium services, your Blu-ray disc, uh, this uh, high def downloads uh, have one set of characteristics. Uh, the game systems may may be equally good in quality, but but they're encoded differently. Uh, and there are buttons on your remotes uh, that let you activate those features. What we're looking at in Media Director is a way to send information about that content that takes that menu browsing uh, out of the out of the equation while not sacrificing either the playback quality or the variety uh, or the or the uh, uh, the, the uh, qualities of the devices. Mm-hmm. Well, certainly um, the different types of content now that we have streaming, uh, Blu-ray, cable, satellite, over the air, all have somewhat different characteristics. And certainly one of the challenges I have as a reviewer of televisions is how do I calibrate the TV for these different types of content, which might have different um, color characteristics, uh, black levels, and so on. And uh, I think what you're saying is that uh, Media Director kind of takes care of that for us now. Uh, two steps. Number one, the, the calibrating, making sure that the device you brought home is set up correctly. Uh, put it in the living room, connect the wires to the right places. Um, all of that, uh, you, know, you, you don't automate that. You still need to know which devices you have and get them plugged together and set them up. And as you say, for the uh, different kinds of, of color characteristics, uh, the Blu-ray has its own color space. Uh, your PlayStation games can actually now uh, generate uh, even a broader color spectrum than what uh, is delivered on Blu-ray. And once you've got the device set up to play each of these modes correctly, the trick is then as you you want to select the right mode for the particular piece of content you're watching at, at one moment. And that's the uh, uh, where Media Director steps in as we send that content information across the, uh, the wire and uh, let the uh, device know what's playing at the moment. It goes into the correct playback setting. Well, let's let's come up with a couple of examples here. F Loop in the chat room is uh, is saying he'd really like to get some examples of what we're talking about to to see what the power of this is. Sure, on uh, Blu-ray disc, for example, there um, the Blu-ray discs are uh, encoded to a color space, a Rec. Seven Hundred Nine. Um, as you were saying, you get some uh, uh, some settings: black level, peak white. Uh, the, the framing of the picture on the uh, on the screen, the aspect ratio of the actual picture, um, so that when you have that as information in the media director metadata and send that to the display, you'll see the picture properly framed and the uh, playback mode uh, correctly set. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you go to switch over, for example, to uh, a game system, uh, you may be generating your color in a uh, uh, in an extended color space at that point, which is generating uh, a a larger number of colors. And in the playback of the game, you may have a a personal preference of setting for for games to have maybe the black level lifted so you can see details in the shadows, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, And these would be saved. Uh, Most TV sets have a a game mode that you can actually uh, tweak a little bit and make it uh, have your own personal preferences reflected. What mm-hmm. media director would bring in this environment is when you are playing the the title on your Blu-ray player, uh, your TV set would go into that THX cinema mode or the appropriate uh, movie mode with the color space rendered correctly. And when you switch over to the game system playing uh, from your PlayStation, that game mode metadata and some of the other uh, technical parameters of the color space would allow the TV to switch to that other uh, playback mode automatically. Mm-hmm. And, I, and, and we should, I think we should uh, make sure that everyone understands that what we're talking about here is taking a piece of content, say a Blu-ray movie or a video game or a broadcast uh, show or a video stream online and embedding certain pieces of what we call metadata, uh, which describe how the, the content was created and how it's supposed to be played back. And that's really what Media Director is responding to, is this metadata that's embedded within the actual content, right? 
Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. And uh, and part of the system, of course, part of the challenge uh, from our perspective is working with the people who are developing and authoring, preparing and distributing the content uh, to enable that side of the of the picture as well. Um, the information that is that is needed in the living room is, is something that's known at the time you're creating the content. A Blu-ray authoring facility, QC facilities, uh, know very well what their production targets are. They calibrate their, their working equipment to a particular level and then make sure that it looks exactly right. And so we're working with them to capture that information about the content and mm -hmm. then deliver that information along with the content over whichever delivery vehicle you're taking and get that to uh, um, to the living room where the device, the playback devices, uh, your, your Blu-ray player, your streaming media player, get that information and then they pass it uh, generally over an HDMI link uh, to the AV receiver, the TV sets. Mm -hmm. So we're really talking about three stages here. We're talking about content creation and embedding metadata into the content itself. Uh, the delivery of the content with the metadata, and then playback, or or what is more technically called rendering uh, of the content using the metadata to set up the playback system uh, in a way that is appropriate for that particular content. Excellent. Hey, you uh, you must have read one of our scripts. <laughs> <That is. laughs> well, you've got some Scott great information. Yeah. You've got some great information on your website, and I would definitely uh, recommend that people who want to learn more about it go to THX.com and find your way to the media director page. The actual URL to get there is pretty long, so I will uh, I will let people... Uh, oh, and he here, those of you who are watching the video can see now we have the uh, website online, content creation, distribution, and playback. There they are. Londog in the chat room is asking... Uh, we need some kind of audio level calibration standard that will allow us to integrate all devices and switching sources and not change the volume levels so much. I hear this all the time, you know, the difference between one channel, one broadcast channel and another, or between the program uh, material, the volume level, and then the commercials. Does Media Director address that at all? Um, we don't specifically go at the how do you get everyone to agree on a on a commonality, um, but mm -hmm. I do believe going forward um, that signaling certain information about the content and the level that uh, that it has, uh, the audio levels that it's mastered to, if you will, um, can be a part of uh, addressing that solution, and we certainly hope so. Um, what what we are at the stage we're at right now, creating this information about content, this metadata, is trying to put as much information um, as we can get at that authoring and creation stage and work with the manufacturers, the device manufacturers, uh, to recognize that such information can be made available to them and that they can then use that uh, to make these adjustments in playback settings that, that respond to that larger uh, consumer wish to have things work right every time and automatically. Um, so I, I do see as we get more and more devices that have the ability to receive metadata and act on it, um, that we can move to um, the kind of um, specific user uh, requirements that you're referring to, find a way mm -hmm. to communicate the information about the content and then allow the devices, obviously they have a volume control, they have the ability to, uh, uh, to set that, but they don't necessarily know where uh, the audio level is set for a particular piece of program content. Mm -hmm. I think in that in that regard, yes, we can work with both the content side and the and the device side and and establish this channel of communication and and hopefully help work toward that kind of a solution. Yeah, Beatmaster in the chat room is is asking about sample to sample variation. You know that when you go from one TV to another of the same model or one receiver to another. Um, they're supposed to be the same, but but there are tolerances, and they aren't quite the same. Not quite the same color. <laughs> NTSC used to be used to stand for <laughs> never the same color twice, <laughs> or never twice the same color. Um, uh, it, we're better now, I think, with with HD TV. But still, I see it all the time that there is a difference from one device to another. Does Media Director ad address uh, that at all? Or I can't see how it really could. Yeah, at this stage, no. I think, again, uh, when we get 
enough manufacturers becoming accustomed to the fact that you can send information and, and react to it uh, related to the content. Uh, we do believe that uh, uh, we can then expand that a little bit to go into uh, supporting auto calibration. But at, at this stage, no, we're, we're about getting to the correct playback setting in a properly set up and calibrated device. So you still, mm. you know, you're still going to want it to do your, uh, uh, your appropriate calibration and setup uh, of, of the device when you bring it home and install it. And that's sure. really today where you get the variances from one device to the other. You, you get it and maybe put it in its factory presets as a starting point, but then put some good reference uh, content uh, in on the device you know, to play back some uh, some representative test patterns or colors and, and make the fine adjustments that make that particular set look correct. And, and frankly, you're also at that point adjusting it for the viewing environment that you're in. Your own living room may be lit uh, differently from uh, right. uh, from someone else's, and, and that does have an effect on how that display is going to look um, in your in your living room. Right, exactly. Uh, Rudy in the chat room is asking, so it's in the Blu-ray disc as extra data? And the answer is yes, but it brings up a question in my mind, which is, how much data are we talking about? I mean, this is this going to impact the amount of information that you can store on a Blu-ray disc? Um, on a Blu-ray disc, uh, the, the typical ones that, that we're authoring these days, um, we're looking at something in the orders of, uh, of hundreds of bytes. Uh, <laughs> okay, okay. Maybe a few K bytes uh, worth of data. Um, we, we do have this kind of conversation before we start putting metadata on a on a title. Uh, the uh, the authoring company will typically say, "Well, we need to know exactly how big the file is going to be so we can calculate our bit rate." Uh, when we get done with the conversation, they realize it it falls below the round off error. That it, it has no impact on the the data space. Uh, of a Blu-ray disc and the and the metadata files, frankly, for a for a Blu-ray title as compared to a, a download file, um, are potentially much larger because you can put more different kinds of content uh, on a Blu-ray disc. You can have some sections that are standard def, some that are high def. Uh, you know, many many multiple audio tracks, that kind of thing. Uh, whereas typically a, a streamed file is is one or two audio channels and a and a single program file for the video. Mm -hmm. uh, but but even in the in the complicated case of a of a heavily loaded uh, Blu-ray disc, now the the number of bytes of data, k bytes of data, is is minimal as as far as mm -hmm. capacity of the disc. And and yet, if I if I understand it correctly, you can actually represent a lot of information with with very few kilobytes. Yes. Yes, we, we can get enough information there to allow uh, a broad spectrum of, of con types of content, technical parameters to uh, to be communicated to display. Um, so what, what types? Of, what sorry? What types of parameters really are we talking about? Can you give me some examples of of the specific parameters that that would be communicated. Sure, we're we're looking at characteristics of the the picture geometry. Uh, that's pixel shapes, uh, the number of pixels per line uh, of the app active picture, the part of the picture that you care about. We identify bar data, um, both top and bottom and, uh, and left and right, so that if a, if a picture, for example, for whatever reason is, is surrounded by black and you want to communicate to the display that it's okay to zoom in uh, and show that image proportionally completely filling the screen in one dimension, top, bottom, or left, right, um, you have enough data to do that. Um, we carry the, the the gamma level, the peak white, uh, the uh, black levels, um, mm -hmm. so that a calibrated set could be adjusted to show uh, to show the images correctly. Mm -hmm. That's uh, you uh, you mentioned a, a moment ago about geometry uh, and and related aspect ratio. I, I'm thinking about uh, certain television channels that are sent in four by three, so you have black bars on the sides of a sixteen by nine. TV, and then they show a 16 by 9 image within that. So there are black bars all around that image. And what you're saying is that Media Director could have some uh, data that says it's okay to expand this out to 16 by 9 and lose all those black bars. Yes, exactly. In, in fact, uh, a lot of old uh, DVD titles that were made when uh, uh, 4 by 3 was the dominant TV set uh, in our living rooms uh, mm -hmm. were made in um, you know what were called letterboxed. 
format as opposed to the anamorphic that's, that spreads out to 16 by 9. The letterbox format was exactly what you described, the, uh, the 4 by 3 image with bars uh, embedded in the top and the bottom. And then a, a current generation DVD or Blu-ray player will play that disc back. And uh, you'll see the bars on the left and right put in by the player to fit the 16 by 9 screen they're connected to and the bars in the top and bottom. And uh, Media Director exactly communicates enough information about the picture to allow a proportional zoom uh, to bring that uh, image as close to full screen as your particular TV set permits. As long as the scaling is good because <clears throat> there are only uh, a relatively few number of pixels in that image. And scaling it up to 1920 by 1080 uh, could cause some scaling artifacts. But, of course, that's, that's not in THX's purview. Right. No, that's the, uh, that's the level of the feature in the device. And that, and that is, I think, a, a good point to raise, Scott, is that Media Director isn't going to make the content any different. If you've got a, a perfectly made uh, Blu-ray disc, putting Media Director metadata on it doesn't make it a better disc. Um, right. It makes it increases the probability that when you play that disc, you're going to see it play back in the right playback mode, not the leftover mode from, from the game you were playing earlier. Um, mm -hmm, and right. so if, you, if you've got letterboxed, uh, you know, standard def uh, video content on your, on your DVD or, or, or the cable channel, as you mentioned, um, it, it's going to look um, the, right, the right size, but not necessarily all the detail. Uh, you're not going to be able to put that back in there. Um, and, and indeed, right. that may be a, a preference setting that, that the consumer uh, uh, can adjust there. Is that, yeah, I prefer to see it you know, in this way or that way. The, the metadata simply gives us the ability to communicate that uh, information to the living room and, and, uh, and again, automate that process. Mm -hmm. Well, that brings up another question that I was going to ask, which is, can the consumer override the metadata and, and uh, tweak their system to be different than what it is specifying. Yes, and that's that's part of what uh, we have the manufacturers build into the sets is the ability to turn that metadata recognition on and off. Um, and I also did mention a couple times now the the ability to take those um, customizable modes that many sets have now, a movie mode, a game mode, uh, mm -hmm. and so on. And those those you can have factory presets, or many of them you can go in and, and in your own environment, change some of those settings, and then save those so that your game preset um, isn't necessarily what came from the factory. It's what you like with your particular game system. Mm -hmm. uh, and so when the game metadata comes in, it can go to that saved mode, not to some... Uh, factory preset or exactly the mode that's uh, encoded in the metadata on the on the on the game. Mm -hmm. uh, would I be correct in summarizing Media Director as being congruent with THX's overall mission of reproducing content as closely as possible to what the content creator intended, the director or the artist or whatever. Uh, my impression of THX is that that's really your overall mission to re reproduce as accurately as possible what was intended in the creation of the content. And that's correct. Uh, from the, the founding of the company and actually <clears throat> another stage of that too, working with content creators to create the content in a, um, in a high quality way. Uh, you know, much of mm. uh, uh, the early THX uh, was in creating um, standards and specifications for color grading rooms and mixing rooms so that the content could be created at a very high quality. And then at the other end, uh, of course, what we're widely known for, the, um, the, the theater um, alignment program, setting up movie theaters to reproduce that sound accurately. As mm -hmm. we moved into consumer electronics, the THX certified devices, again, consistent with that, how do we set and measure and then communicate to the consumer these particular devices have characteristics and features that allow them to faithfully reproduce that high quality content. And media director grows out of that, then how do I get the right setting out of that great variety uh, to be turned on in the devices apropos the particular piece of content that's being played at, at that time. So yes, mm -hmm. it's a very consistent with that move um, that, that's been there throughout the company's history. 
Right. Virgil in the chat room is asking, does THX still help in the setup of movie theaters? And, and I think the answer is yes. The answer is very much yes. Um, you can visit our website and see a list of theaters that have uh, THX certified. Um, pretty much, I think, all of them also keep a plaque on the, uh, uh, on the entrance to the particular theater. In a multiplex, for example, not necessarily every room is THX certified. Uh, those mm -hmm. that are, are are singled out. And if you uh, see at the beginning of a movie the uh, THX trailer that comes up, our deep note uh, logo, logo sound, mm -hmm. um, you know you're in a room that's been that's been set up and, and graded with the THX program. Those are the, the rooms where the, that are allowed to play that trailer uh, ahead of a movie. Now, this, this is a question not related to media director, but rather to the theater program. You may or may not be able to answer it, but um, I've been writing uh, uh, this week about uh, Dolby Atmos, which is this new sound system that puts speakers overhead as well as around the audience to provide a three-dimensional true three-dimensional sound field and uh, first movie to use that is uh, brave which just opened this last weekend um <clears throat> is thx working with dolby at all on that or are they completely separate um if if we are working with them it's an in an area that's separate from the parts that i'm working on I've, I've, like you've been seeing a lot of uh, uh internet chatter on the on the technology uh and mm -hmm. Sounds, sounds quite impressive. Um, certainly in other areas, and I know, Scott, you know this, but I, you know, frequently we see people that uh, say, uh, well, you've got all of these different audio technologies in, in whether it's consumer or theater, you know, DTS and Dolby and, of course, THX. And, and people speak as if we were uh, another codec, you know, and a, a, a right. technology that encodes. And, of right. course, uh, we're not. And uh, we do work uh, in our consumer electronic products uh, to ensure that, whatever the codec that's employed for, for sound DTS or Dolby or any others, that they're uh, appropriately and faithfully reproduced by a, a THX certified device. Um, in video space, uh, likewise, we don't have a THX video codec, but uh, when we worry about uh, displays showing pictures correctly, um, the, the standards cut across the various proprietary technologies that are involved. Our, our goal is make sure that that creative intent, however encoded, is delivered to the consumer um, as faithfully as possible using mm -hmm. the tools, using the tools and the technology of the devices the consumer owns. Yes, I've written about this. I've talked about it on Leo Laporte's radio show um, that a lot of people do make that mistake of thinking that THX and Dolby and DTS are equivalent. They're doing the same thing, but in fact, they're not. Uh, Dolby and DTS have competing uh, codecs, coder decoder, audio coder decoder systems. Um, THX can ride on top of either one or anything else just to make sure that uh, the playback is as uh, good as it possibly can be. Uh, Rudy in the chat room is asking, is media director a hardware device or software or is it run on a computer? Um, it's not a specific hardware device. It does live in in content, as you were describing. It's metadata, it's information that's added, uh, carried as a, a data file on a Blu-ray disc or a DVD. Um, it can be uh, encoded in streaming files or downloadable files. Um, but then it does, in when it gets to the living room, uh, your devices need to be uh, media director literate. They need to know what uh, that the metadata is there, that it's being carried on the uh, content. Uh, it needs to be read from the content. And then uh, let's say you're working with a Blu-ray disc uh, as an example. The Blu-ray player would need to know to look for that data file. It opens that file as the content plays, and then it takes the metadata uh, messages and puts them into the HDMI data stream, that digital interconnect between your Blu-ray player and AV mm -hmm. receiver, the TV set, uh, and there's a place where the our uh, information metadata bits go into that data flow and then get mm -hmm. to the next device. And then, of course, the receiving device, the AVR and the, and the TV set, need to know to look for those particular bits, and then they map those, uh, the settings that they see communicated in the, uh, uh, in the information uh, messages, uh, they map that to their playback settings in that particular mm -hmm. device. <clears throat> um, F Loop in the chat room is talking, is asking about, doesn't metadata already, 
doesn't HDMI already transmit metadata and maybe this media director metadata should just be put in the next HDMI standard? Um, what do you think? Um, HDMI is, is a transport spec. It, it describes the, the sending of bits from one device to another in, in a living room environment. And indeed, uh, there are bits in that data stream that are metadata. They're not the content. They're information about the content. Um, mm -hmm. Part of the negotiation that happens as you plug your HDMI TV set to a Blu-ray player, uh, the two devices chat with each other, if you will, to, to say, uh, to establish the playback resolution. How, you know, the, the TV set will say, I'm this kind of TV. I have this much resolution and the, uh, the Blu-ray player can respond to that. And, and right. That's, called, that's by the way, called, point. you'll hear the term EDID. Uh, extended display identification, which is what you're talking about, I think, right? Yes, yes. The display sends that needed message to the to the uh, to the Blu-ray player, and the Blu-ray player uh, reacts appropriately. And that that's a necessary part of the communication that that takes place. And there are bits that are established uh, and defined in the HDMI spec that are relevant to the kind of playback settings we've been talking about um, for media director. And so. Um, we use those bits. You know, when mm. a system is media director compliant, uh, it means that the, the the source device, the player, has been instructed, taught uh, to set certain bits in the uh, in that HDMI stream. Some of them are bits that are already defined. Uh, some of the bits that we have defined in the media director uh, schema uh, did not exist as pre-assigned data bits in HDMI, but HDMI did have, does have uh, the ability to add what are called vendor-specific info frames, packets of data that can be defined outside of what's in the spec, and that's the mechanism that we've used. Um, mm -hmm. you, don't expect, so, uh, you don't expect HDMI to, to come out with a new version with media directors specified bits in it, do you? You're just planning to continue to use those vendor-specific uh, data frames? Uh, we do plan to keep doing it the way we have been doing it. Um, those of you who are familiar with uh, when HDMI adapted itself to communicate information about 3D. Um, you know, prior to 3D coming into the home, of course, there were there were no sources of 3D content for living room, and there were no uh, no bits in the HDMI relative to signaling that. Um, as HDMI and the manufacturers who participated in that group were building the Blu-ray 3D format and preparing for some of the cable and satellite uh, 3D formats. Um, they built, actually used that same mechanism, that vendor-specific info frame. There is a, an HDMI vendor-specific info frame that carries many bits of information relative to uh, communicating about 3D content and allowing TV sets to uh, react to uh, those bits and go into playback modes for different kinds of broadcast 3D or uh, the Blu-ray format, the very high quality uh, 3D. Mm -hmm. So, so we basically uh, have utilized the same mechanism that the HDMI LLC group did for communicating yet additional uh, metadata bits. Yeah. Well, I want to talk next about. Um where we are with Media Director currently and when we'll start seeing actual product and content. But before we do, I want to take a moment to thank our sponsor for this episode, which is Netflix. We may very well see Media Director uh, on uh, coming streaming from Netflix at some point uh, in the not-too-distant future. But for now, you can certainly stream thousands of TV movies, uh, episodes, and uh, TV shows and, uh, and movies directly to your TV. Uh, or your computer, or your smartphone or tablet, uh, using just about any consumer electronics device in the world right now. Uh, Blu-ray players, TVs themselves, uh, gaming consoles, uh, as I said, smartphones and tablets, computers, just about any device you can buy these days that has to do with uh, audio and video probably has the Netflix app on it, allowing you to stream instantly uh, directly into whatever device you want to watch it, to consume it on. You can even start on one device and finish on another, which is the ultimate inconvenience, not to mention uh, no waiting for discs or putting them in the player or anything like that. It just streams directly to your device instantly, saving you time, money, and hassle. And for our listeners, you can sign up for a 30-day free trial. Those few of you who might be hearing my voice and not, experienced with Netflix so far. Uh, just go to netflix.com slash twit 
and sign up for that 30-day free trial. Be sure to use that URL, uh, netflix.com slash twit. And we thank Netflix very much for their support of Home Theater Geeks and the entire Twit Network. So um, tell us, where, where are we with the development of Media Director? Is it already available? Or does the, are content providers, uh, content creators using it? Uh, are there devices that will understand it? Is it being transmitted? What, what's the state of the art right now? Well, the state of the, the art right now is, yes, there are pieces of content being created that have metadata actually on them. The uh, first uh, such uh, product was the uh, Star Wars box set, Blu-ray discs. Um, and since then, the uh, both the DVD and Blu-ray uh, versions of uh, Red Tails uh, uh, released recently. There are several other titles um, in authoring and production. Um, our friend Mark Waldrop over at AIX Media has put uh, Media Director Metadata on, uh, um, I think, about a half a dozen of his titles now. Some of, them, oh. uh, some of, his, some of his 3D concerts, the Mozart was the, uh, the first one that carried uh, Media Director Metadata. Mm-hmm. Um, you, know, I, you may have seen his recent uh, release, uh, the Mars 3D, uh, which I think is a, a fascinating uh, piece of content. Um, that also carries our metadata, as, as do some of his uh, traditional uh, 2D uh, releases that uh, have been coming out over the last month and will, co- and will continue to. Mark's uh, uh, not only the, the owner and the producer of that content, uh, AIX Media is an authoring facility, and they have been uh, creating the metadata files and uh, placing those um, on their titles. Um, mm-hmm. By the way, I should mention that uh, Mark Waldrop has been a guest on this show more than once. And uh, he produces some of the very best uh, concert uh, videos uh, on Blu-ray uh, with superb audio quality. Really, it's, it's audio file quality uh, music uh, with accompanying Blu-ray and in some cases uh, high definition, in some cases 3D uh, video. And uh, I'm very glad to hear that he is among the vanguard of those who are starting to put media director metadata on his discs. He is, he is definitely a pioneer in many ways, and so I'm not all that surprised, but I'm very glad to hear it. Yeah, no, we've been pleased. We've been working actually with Mark when he first shot uh, a lot of that 3D programming, and I know you uh, visited him on set, I think, for one of the productions. Um, I did. And we, used, we were using uh, not only the, the, the Blu-ray now that these are being authored and released uh, carrying the metadata, but uh, we actually used uh, side-by-side and over-under uh, 3D, the, the cable-oriented kind of broadcast versions of 3D um, to develop some proof of concept uh, of our technology for, for cable use. Uh, and the like to show that that the technology that we're building here will be applicable uh, beyond just optical discs and, and streaming media, but also into into the broadcast space. Mm-hmm. But at, as to your question, where are we now? Uh, we are releasing mm-hmm. uh, titles. Uh, Kino Lorber is another uh, producer that has uh, just released a title and. Uh, Part of what's been important uh, for many of these partners is the tools that create metadata. Uh, we, we have built some that we provide from THX. So it's a, a relatively straightforward process, but uh, in the case of DVD and Blu-ray authoring, um, many companies uh, prefer to use the, the full professional suite of tools um, in, in DVD and Blu-ray um, Sonic Solutions now Rovi Corp um, mm-hmm. builds a set of tools that are that are very well known Sonarist and now the uh, Rovi uh, Total Code product and their their DVD and Blu-ray products uh, include the ability right in the authoring system to build the media director metadata and add it to a title. Mm-hmm. Um, the Kino Lorber one that I mentioned is was actually used Sonarist to, to author that metadata. Um, with Star Wars and uh, and Red Tails, we were working with uh, Deluxe Media, the authoring facility um, that does not use the uh, Sonarist for their um, workflow on Blu-ray titles. So they uh, they used a, a tool that we provided to build the metadata. Um, but we are working with uh, with Sony. The the Blueprint authoring tool is a, is another one that is used by a number of facilities, and that that will have a release this uh, 
late July, early August, uh, we understand that we'll have Media Director built in into that authoring tool. So mm -hmm. we're building the infrastructure. We're working with the authoring facilities. Uh, I mentioned Deluxe and AIX, but uh, uh, Refine Group in, in the UK is another company that's uh, offering that service uh, to their mm -hmm. To their clients um, related related to i'm sorry quick before we go on related to authoring uh beatmaster in the chat room is asking uh will this ever be available to consumers uh you know uh, budding filmmakers people who use final cut uh maybe even to do their own home movies or you know want want to start creating their stuff at, at the prosumer level perhaps is this ever going to trickle down to to that level uh, we absolutely intend to get it to every level of content creation um, that we can. And mm -hmm. uh, certainly anybody that's interested in, in exploring that in, in an early stage at this level, we, you know, our, our email address and link is uh, on our website. We'd be happy to talk with people. We have looked at uh, getting this content uh, metadata uh, put into kind of consumer-oriented tools, and that's uh, um, not yet something that's been announced, but I believe it will uh, get to be a very interesting possibility as we get more and more mm -hmm. TV sets and, and Blu-ray players, devices that implement it. Uh, I think the consumer interest will be quite high, and, and we are absolutely going to be supporting that from, from THX's side. Mm -hmm. Okay, how about in the uh, in the delivery phase? Are, are, are you at a point where the metadata can be broadcast, uh, streamed. Um, obviously, it can be put on Blu-ray because it already has been. Uh, what about the other transport uh, mechanisms? Yeah, we have uh, worked actually with Rovi Corporation not only on their authoring tool end, but uh, on their um, movie service, uh, the Rovi Entertainment Store. Um, has about 15,000 titles, I believe, movies in the in their database now that uh, actually feeds a number of different storefront services. And that back-end data, um, the server is uh, holds the metadata and is capable of streaming it to the uh, playback devices. Uh, Rovi is also built into the what they call their developer kit, the, the uh, software that runs in a TV set or a Blu-ray player to play back those movies. Um, to put the code to receive that metadata, and we and they together are working with a few partners now to uh, to activate that functionality in, in the devices. So the, mm -hmm. the, the, con the content side, uh, putting metadata into content is well underway, and, and the Rovi is, is the first that's actually completed this, but we are uh, developing, we have specifications that uh, we have for putting Media Director with other forms of streaming and downloadable media, uh, and uh, we, we expect to see uh, some other services announcing their ability to, to support that, both on the content side and the player side, between now and the end of the year. Mm -hmm. And then what about on the playback end? Uh, AV receivers, TVs, uh, Blu-ray players, where are we with that? Um, You've, you've seen actually with us, Scott, I know you got uh, by to see us at Cedia and saw the, the first playback of the Star Wars discs. Um, uh, Dune HD, a uh, company that uh, makes media players and the top end of their media player lineup has uh, a couple of top models have uh, uh, Blu-ray players in them, Blu-ray DVD players. Uh, they were the first to, to show a, a device with uh, Media Director integrated into, uh, into a, a source playback device. Um, they worked with uh, Sigma Designs manufacturers, the, uh, the uh, chip that's inside those units and helps facilitate the programming. And we've been working with not only Sigma, but Silicon Image, analog devices, and now uh, three or four other manufacturers that we think will be announcing media director support between now and, and the Cedia, uh, the September time frame. Mm -hmm. um, and that's going to enable building more of these playback source devices, Blu-ray players and, and media players. Um, Beyond that, um, we do have a number of uh, AVR manufacturers that uh, are in stages now of uh, integrating Media Director into uh, forthcoming product. And none, none that have announced the particular model number or ship dates, but they are um, have been working with uh, analog devices on a reference design AVR that's in their chipset. And a, and a couple of other manufacturers in that space. Um, mm. So we do expect to see three or four AVRs, I think, uh, again, with, within the CDA to CES time frame uh, mm -hmm. coming forward. And, uh, and then on the TV set side, display side, um, again, you saw it at CDA, I think, the uh, um, 
the uh, Sharp Elite display that they were uh, uh, that they had embedded Media Director for for purposes of our our presentations and demos. They are working with us for integration into in a shipping product that'll that'll come uh, again. Uh, for they, for Eps, Epson, and a few other display manufacturers, uh, again between now and CES, we'll see a number of different, both projectors and and flat panel displays that'll be integrating the media director functionality. So there are none currently available. Not not currently shipping to consumers. That's right. Right, but you know, as you say, Cedia is only uh, what three months away, less. Um, and uh, 10 weeks, I think. Oh, my goodness. Uh, <laughs> I will be seeing you there, I'm sure, eh? <laughs> <laughs> we will. I think we probably both just got a reminder we need to book our flights. <laughs> yeah, I just did last week, actually. And, <laughs> and the prices are going up, so you might want to uh, hurry up on that one. Yep. But uh, in any event, yes. Yeah, so at the, C- at the Cedia Trade Show, the Custom Electronics Design and Installation Association in uh, uh, Indianapolis, uh, hopefully we will see some products that actually have... A media director in them, which people will be able to buy probably towards the end of the year if things are as they normally are. And uh, but but then we'll really start to see this whole idea of of uh, transmitting and delivering this metadata from the content through the pipeline to the consumer and have it uh, have their system set itself properly without having to dive into menus as we were talking about earlier. Lawn Dog in the chat room is asking, <clears throat> uh, what about if the source is, is old, like something from the 70s? Uh, or, or even more, more recent, this was a question I had too, uh, even more recent uh, files that don't have the, the media director metadata embedded, uh, is there anything that can be done with those, I mean, I guess they could be re-encoded uh, onto DVD or, or whatever, just add, add the data to it. Is there something that can be done to reprocess it and make it better? Um, well, the making better part is, yes, they're reprocessing that and re-encoding that, that may be able to adjust the content. And, and then adding Media Director metadata to signal what you've readjusted it to would, hmm. would be something that would be, would be very straightforward. Um, in terms of if content is coming through digital channels, but it was sourced from something that's very old, um, yes, media director could be added into the workflow. Um, one of the things, and I think we may not have been showing this, uh, Scott, at demos you've seen, um, but even Blu-ray titles or DVD titles that were authored you know, two or three years ago don't have metadata on physically on the disc. Um, we do have built into the technology the ability to uh, – detect what disc is playing. Um, there are a number of different systems out there that can do that, tell you you're playing a particular uh, title. And mm-hmm. we can build the metadata file separately and, and bring it in by, by an internet connection. Um, again, many, many of your listeners are probably familiar with metadata being delivered with, with iTunes products, the, the jacket art for your CD, sure, uh, things sure. like that. There are services that do that. Well, delivering, you know, we kind of talked about how big is the media director metadata, and it's it's way smaller than the list of, of performers on a CD uh, in right. terms of digital size. So adding that into some sort of delivery system to be able to, to send a metadata file once you know what what particular piece of content you're working with uh, is is pretty easy to do. Um, building the metadata That's, is not comp. Yeah, I was going to say building the metadata is not complicated. We have built just to prove that uh, a database of 1,200 DVD titles that we have uh, that can be either loaded onto a memory stick uh, and and read in a player that way, or or can be uh, downloaded on uh, over a, a an internet connection so that a DVD Blu-ray player could get updates there. Um, and we are working with uh, almost a half a dozen student uh, studios now doing a similar thing in Blu-ray. Um, if you have a BD Live function uh, mm-hmm. authored onto, onto a, a, a disc that was made two, three years ago, um, we can work with the studio and add the media director metadata into the online file. And when the disc goes online to access that uh, that BD Live content, the metadata file gets updated, and by the time the disc player plays it back, it looks like it was the metadata was already on the disc. Huh. There's no difference. Wow, that's in, no, yeah, that's pretty cool. That's actually pretty cool that you so you, then you can take a disc that doesn't have this metadata on it, and as long as the player is 
connected to the internet, which most of them are these days, uh, you have the potential anyway to download that data and use it even if it's not on the disk. Correct. And, and, and your reaction was exactly mine when I saw I worked the first time. Was, this is very cool. And it, it really had, <laughs> it, it, it had very little to do with anything that we did other than create the file and put it in a particular place uh, in the disk structure. Uh, BD Live actually, in the way it was designed, uh, didn't have to be modified or, or adjusted in any way uh, to support this functionality. It, 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 w- it was designed and built in a way that, uh, that anticipated a desire to bring files that, that weren't known when the specs were written. And so mm-hmm. our, our file just appears in the player, and a media director-enabled player looks there, finds the file, and, and does what it would do if it found it on the disk. Mm-hmm. PC Guru in the chat room asks, uh, how do you feel about digitally delivered movies? Do you think that Blu-ray disc will stay around for a while? This is the age-old question, of course, is uh, are we seeing the end of physical media? Uh, If you're asking me personally, I I think Blu-ray is going to hang around for a long time. Um, I I come out of the the, uh, LaserDisc side of Pioneer Electronics. um, Mm -hmm. And uh, while while the, the, the bridge between... DVD to LaserDisc, you know, pretty much eliminated LaserDisc. It, it, it did that because DVD delivered all of the, the, the things that people came to value in LaserDisc and, and improved on form factor and other, other things like that. But I think sure. packaged media in its ability to, uh, to deliver a huge number of bits in an extraordinarily reliable manner, um, I think it's going to stick around for, for quite a while. I, I think the streamed media and downloadable files deliver a, a level of convenience and they are mm-hmm. increasing in their in their ability to deliver quality um, but at least what I see in working with the people that are authoring and creating the blu-ray titles they are they are putting that kind of special extra effort uh, into creating that content with the idea that the consumer will will get the maximum exposure you know not only to the movie but the bonus content uh, the right. live functionality and so on and, the high res uh, audio yeah you know yeah, and I think yeah, I, I think all of these are going to coexist, and, and that's really, again, where Media Director comes in. If I thought the whole world was going to go to one kind of content, ultimately, everything's streaming or everything's Blu-ray or whatever, there's mm-hmm. less need to put the metadata on the disc. You'd simply have one kind of content. Your TV set would be hooked to one kind of channel, and it, it would just always be right. Uh, where Media Director came in about in the first place was seeing the diversity of content uh, and when we started this project, it was the diversity of content was uh, cable and broadcast and DVD and uh, uh, a little bit of early streaming content. Yeah, HD, DVD, and Blu-ray came along after uh, the media director element had started, and it only increased the likelihood that content would get more diverse. And then we got 3D, and uh, now we're getting the launch of Ultraviolet, and we're right. going to see other new kinds of content. And I think it's a great thing. The, the ability of the, the living room devices, you, you don't go to the store and say, I'm, I'm going to buy an amplifier in order to listen to, to audio that comes over my broadcast. I buy a different amplifier for, for uh, my <laughs> Blu-ray collection. You know, the, that would be madness, which is why we have so much variety in the devices. I think it's good that the devices are adapting to the variety of content. The fact that the variety of content is going to continue to grow, um, really that, the, the challenge that we face on the media director side is how do we find the way to integrate our metadata mechanisms into each of these different content delivery technologies um, so that we can offer this ease of use across the board to the whole mm-hmm. spectrum of content. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and the reactions that we've been getting to that message uh, have been quite positive when we go into to talk to somebody that's do, building an encoding device or they're you know coming up with an idea for a particular streaming service. Um, they understand the challenge of making sure that it shows up in the living room looking the way they intended. And so they see media directors a very a very viable component of their forward looking plans. Mm-hmm. Well, it certainly is the age-old question of convenience versus quality, and I do agree with you that I expect both to survive and coexist for a long time because there are situations where you want convenience and there are other situations where you want quality, um, the highest possible quality. And to be able to choose is, after all, uh, a very good thing. 
Choice is a good thing, but with choice comes uh, compl complications, complexity, and uh, this is what I think Media Director is trying to to address. Beatmaster in the chat room <laughs> made a good comment. Hang on, Jeff is saying there is an actual useful usage for BD Live. <laughs> <laughs> yes, at least one. Yeah, at least one. Yes, exactly. And, and, um, and actually, we've been, we've been playing with some of the, you know, in order to do these tests with a couple of the studios. Um, for me, it's been, uh, uh, I yeah, knew the, the theory of BD Live, but hadn't spent a lot of time uh, using connected players. Um, there are actually some titles out there that have some nice BD Live features already built onto them. Uh, might give it a, another look. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> Lawn Dog in the chat room is asking, uh, will this uh, media director be able to be updated with things that are coming in the future, uh, like uh, perhaps Dolby Atmos uh, for the home? We we don't expect that for some time yet, but, um, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if we do get an overhead speaker system at some point from Dolby or somebody, um, or perhaps 4K. I mean, I can't imagine that this wouldn't be uh, extensible. Um, it is extensible, and we actually did that once uh, already when 3D started coming into uh, to the home theater environment. Um, actually, prior to the HDMI release of, of uh, 3D signaling, um, we had already developed a, a fairly extensive set of metadata flags that we anticipated would be used in in uh, in broadcast and, and other forms for 3D. And so our our data structures. Uh, included signals for 3D before we actually knew that people were going to be encoding and delivering it. Uh, so when the HDMI bits uh, became available, if you will, the, the ones we were talking of earlier, uh, we already knew uh, that how, how to hold those bits in a, on a Blu-ray disc or a DVD or a, or a streamed content. Um, we had to just tweak our spec to say, Put those, put the meaning that you know about this particular content in these HDMI bits. The parts that they did not describe, uh, we had to have some of our bits uh, used for that purpose. There are, for example, the HDMI will tell you that you have um, this broadcast quality 3D side by side and, and top bottom. It won't tell you um, is the left eye do the dominant one or the right eye. Um, mm -hmm. In, in broadcast, there's pretty much a set standard spec. You do the left eye as the dominant eye, but in the in 3D encoders that you could use, so you could stream content uh, built either way. Uh, we carry a bit that says you can go with one or the other. Um, a company called Sensio and our friends over at Dolby both have developed uh, additional quality-oriented encoding technologies to, to enhance and improve the quality of 3D in those broadcast environments. Um, the bits to signal to your devices to, that content was encoded using one or another of those technologies are not in the HDMI 3D bits, uh, but they are in ours. Uh, so we complement their um, their signaling and, and extend it in, in an area. And I absolutely expect us to uh, continue to do that. Um, these new audio formats are, are a key area that we're already looking at and uh, uh, talking to the manufacturers who are building the devices. What What information do we need to send to you uh, in order for you to automatically turn on some of these new functions and features. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, it sounds like a fabulous system. I, I really can't wait to, you know, give it a try and see what uh, what comes of it in the various rooms that I have access to. Um, and that brings up another question, actually. Um, would media director be able to take into account the room in which one is? Say, for example... Uh, you um, take a microphone and plug it into your AVR and run Odyssey or Pioneer MCACC or whatever. Uh, will Media Director take into account any of that? Um, the Media Director implementation in a device, absolutely. Um, it would... You know, what Media Director brings into the device is information about the particular piece of content that you're watching. Um, so the device then would would take that information and add it to the information that uh, it may be able to detect or discern about the environment. Um, right now, there's there's a level of that starting to be put in TV sets, it, you know, either either by a switch or by an auto detector, knowing the, the room light level, ambient light. Um, right. 
you know, when you calibrate a display, you want to calibrate it in a room that is lit the way you're going to watch your movies. And you may have two different ways of watching, so you may calibrate a, a, a bright room and a dark room and mm -hmm. switch between those modes. Um, adding the ability to switch between those modes with a light sensor in the room adds to then if I'm bringing in a movie that has a particular gamma and a particular black level and I'm in my bright room mode, then the TV set would, would be able to use its characteristics to say, then this is going to be the right setting and make those mm -hmm. adjustments. Mm -hmm. So, so we're, we're symbiotic with it, uh, with that. And, and absolutely that, that is again, another piece of the, the whole ecosystem that, uh, mm -hmm. that we are already working with the, the manufacturers and the, and the content folks in, in developing that. Right. Well, it's a fascinating uh, subject and, and a technology that uh, I certainly look forward to seeing more of. I guess we'll see more of it at Cedia and uh, in products rolling out towards the end of the year or maybe next year. And uh, I'm certainly looking forward to trying them. Well, Scott, we're, we're always glad to speak with you and show you uh, where we are in, in developing this technology and uh, appreciate the opportunity here to uh, uh, send this information out uh, to your viewers as well. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, Jeff Tully is the uh, director of media director at THX. And um, you can get uh, more information about it at THX.com. Jeff, thanks so much for being on the show. Thank you, Scott. Um, <clears throat> my online home, of course, is hometheater.com. You can email me at scott at twit.tv. And you can follow me on Twitter at htgeekscott. This is our last show from this particular studio. Next week, I will be moving my podcast studio to uh, another room in my home where we won't have the uh, bandwidth freezing issues that we've had from here. And uh, I think at this point, what I'm planning to do is uh, simply be there with you, show you around a little bit, uh, answer questions from the chat room. And it'll be a free-for-all. Uh, any and all topics related to home theater or audio and video will be fair game. So I do hope you'll join me for that. This is my last podcast from this studio. Next week, I will be in my new studio at home, broadcasting at the new time of 1 p.m. Pacific time, 4 p.m. Eastern. Uh, and I will be basically hanging with the chat room. I'll show you my new studio, and uh, we'll be talking. I'll be answering questions from the chat room. Anything you care to ask uh, is all fair game, as long as it has to do with audio or video, home theater, uh, anything along those lines. I would be very happy to chat with you about that. So I do hope you'll join me. Until then, geek out. <laughs>